This is the AML Pro series. What we have here is uh, we have a very nice pair of uh, headphones. We've got two sets of uh, nine volt batteries and uh, we've got our unit. And then in this section we have a lithium battery. And for the, for the time that you're just gonna be pulling this unit out um, and using it for a short period of time, maybe an hour or two at the most, uh, these batteries, the nine volt batteries, are gonna work out real good for you as long as it goes in this direction and uh, not this way then the unit will be able to power up and uh, everything's set to go. What I want to show you is I want to show you how to hook up the lithium battery so that if you have to do extensive locating you can uh, use that as well. What you do with that is you use this cord. There's a little blue knob here. You pull that out, a little port. This gets plugged directly into there. It's pushed in nice and tight and then turned so that it won't pull out. Set that down. Pull out your lithium battery. It has three different ports to it. No big deal which one you, you plug this unit into. Just choose one, make sure it goes in like that, plugs in all the way. Then normally what I would do is I would stick this in my back pocket and run this through a pant leg loop. That way the extra cord doesn't dangle down. One more thing to talk about when it comes to the batteries is this is the standard 9 volt battery. It is not a rechargeable battery pack. And what we do is, in order for this unit to work with the lithium battery, we must install one of these units. Now, I've been asked, can you use rechargeable batteries in here and stick them in? And the answer is no, we don't want you to use rechargeable batteries. Uh, rechargeable batteries are a little bit larger in diameter. You might get them in the unit, but make it very difficult to pull those back out. So do not use rechargeable batteries. One other thing that we want to talk about is when this is in here, this is strictly, this cord is strictly to go into the lithium battery or this can actually go into your computer if you have to download any information, uh, newer versions or anything like that. The one thing you do not want to do is you want to use this in here and thinking that this will get plugged into the wall, a 110, and will charge the batteries that are in here. That will most likely short circuit the unit almost immediately. So do not, do not plug this into a wall. If you want to recharge the lithium battery pack, there is a smaller cable. There's a real small port on here that that plugs into. Then you can plug that into here and then that will go into uh, a 110 outlet. And if you're in your truck or vehicle and this dies on you and you don't have a 110 outlet available, then you can plug this into your 12 volt into your vehicle and it will charge the unit quicker than a standard 110 charge. It will take about eight hours to charge the unit, the, the lithium battery. And uh, on the AML Pro, you will get about 15 hours of use out of one charge. We also have the AML Plus model. The AML Plus runs on the same batteries. You can use the nine volts. Now this unit, you're gonna get about maybe 10 hours of use out of one set of batteries of the nine volt. The AML Pro, you're only going to get about four to five hours of use. So that's why it's important that uh, you use the lithium battery whenever possible with the, with the Pro. So once the unit's all plugged in like this, you can put that into your pocket. All right, turn the unit on. 
it takes about four to five seconds for the unit to go through its checklist and be ready to locate. So now what you have is the unit's on, it's making a beep. When the beep comes out, a little red light shoots out, but what we do is we have different sensitivities on this unit. This unit goes from sensitivity of 32 being the highest down to a sensitivity of one being very low. And we can adjust that sensitivity by hitting these up and down arrows here. As you can tell, it, I hit it once and it goes down one notch. With, uh, with the AML Plus, we have nine sensitivity settings. Nine being the hottest, one being the coolest or the, the less sensitive. And in other sections, we will cover the sensitivity settings so that you know which sensitivity setting is the best for you. All right, on these models, both the AML Plus and the AML Pro, we do have reference codes, QR codes on these units. So if you have any questions when you're out in the field, you can actually use your smartphone and snap the picture on the barcode and it'll tell you some information about these units. One will give you a quick start reference I will give you a training videos, there'll be some FAQs, and then it'll give us give you some tech assistance. If you're out in the field and you have any questions, go ahead and hit that tech assistance, which will have phone numbers on it for the office, for the regional manager in your area, for the inside salespeople, and for the president of the company. You can get a hold of anybody at any time, and we'll be happy to help you. Then, in this section, we want to cover the proper holding of these units. One thing with them, these are very sensitive. So what you want to do is you want to hold it properly like I am right here. I don't want to hold it with two hands like this. This is okay, but it's not the easiest. What we don't want to see is this. Because um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually interfering or maybe interfering with the antennas where my hands are. So we want to hold it back like this. Same thing with this unit. Yeah, much easier to hold. It feels very good in your hands at this point. If you go like this, it just feels awkward and uh, definitely don't do the two-handed. When you're doing a proper locate, you don't want this unit too close to your body either. What's going to happen is the unit may send out the signal and it may bounce off an object, bounce off your, your body, and then cause the unit to go off. Keep it out. It all has to be is about 20 to 24 inches away from your, from your body, and then you just work it in a pattern like this. And if you get too close to yourself like this, you can actually be locating your shoes, um, your toes, and causing a light to come on where, where there's actually nothing, nothing there. And uh, so whichever the way the pipe is going, just keep it out away from your, your body a little bit and don't, don't stand here like this. All right, in this section, we're gonna cover how to properly set the sensitivities. Now with the AML Plus, we have sensitivities of nine being the highest, one being the lowest. Now I'm gonna be starting out on concrete, which means that the signal, the radio frequency goes through concrete. And what we wanna do is we wanna set the sensitivity to the proper either depth or the type of soil that we're, we're gonna be on. So when I turn the unit on and put it in setting nine, I can easily locate one edge of this pipe. Go to the other side and I can easily locate that side of the pipe. So I'm going to turn the turn it down two notches. I'm on setting seven. I can easily locate that edge. So I'm going to go down to five. I can easily pick up this edge yet. So I'm going to go to three. It up so I'm going to go to two. Now in setting two, 
I can't pick up either either end. So now I'm going to go up to setting three. If I like setting three a little bit better, it's still a little bit difficult. But in setting four, I can get a nice nice edge. So setting that tells me that setting four appears to be the the right setting for working on top of concrete and, and blacktop in this area. I can get that edge. I'm keeping the unit far away from my body, like you can see if up to 20 inches away. I'm not getting my foot in the way. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go way down and find it. Technique. I can lock on to a side of the pipe and if I go just a little bit lower my sound disappears and it acts like I lose that signal and I get it again then I lose it so what I want to do from losing it, I want to tweak it back and forth. Like I'm jigging for walleye, just a nice slow. Go up and I get that edge. But once, I only want to do this when I know I'm on the edge of a pipe. If I'm not on the edge of a pipe, I want to keep it nice and straight as I do some blind searching. But when I know I'm on the edge of a pipe, we are on concrete going to natural grass. So we're still on the edge of this culvert right here. And one thing we want to point out, it's very important to get these settings set properly. It'll help if the higher the number the more smaller changes in density you may find in the ground that you don't want to know where it is. So if we can eliminate some of those smaller changes in density, it'll make my life or the operator's life much easier to stay on the edge of the pipe. So we're in setting seven, I can locate it in setting six. Again, setting five, I can find it. So I'm gonna just stay in setting five. There's a nice strong signal there. Still on concrete, so we get a nice strong signal there. Okay, at this point, I now lost my signal. I went from concrete to natural grass. So I have, because grass is less dense than concrete, I have to raise my sensitivity up. So in setting six, I can just barely get that edge. So setting seven, Appears to be the, the better sensitivity for locating in the grass scenario right here. When you're working on your technique, it's a nice slow motion. Nice and slow. Don't. If I go like this, it's really staticky. I can't locate anything. It's like it's continually going off. So nice and easy. Makes it allow you to follow that edge real, real nice. And then the other edge over here. That's what you don't want. One more thing. When you hold this handle completely horizontal, this kicks out at a 10 degree angle. That's to keep it away from catching your boots and your shoes. So if you want to be deadly accurate with this, say you're trying to locate a pipe that's eight foot down, if I'm at an angle like this and my light comes on way over there, that pipe's gonna be way over there. If I hold this at a 10 degree angle and look right down the edge of the blade, then I know I can be real accurate and where that red light is on the ground, and I know I'm right on that edge.
I'm also going to cover storage, proper storage with these units. These units come in a very nice case, hard case, actually waterproof case, um, nice foam, everything. They're very well protected. So if you use these units, either one, the Pro or the Plus, in a rainy day and they get wet, make sure they don't get put back in the case and closed up. Make sure they are dried out, taken in the house, maybe a fan blowing on them. Make sure all the moisture is out of them before you store them back in these units. Because once the case lid gets closed, if you set them back in a real hot truck the next day and the sun's shining on them, uh, you could really bake that moisture into these units and cause the, the boards to short out. But other than that, if there, if there is no rain and you're just ending them at a regular day, just take these units, unplug your batteries. Take the lithium battery out, put it back in its uh, case. If it needs charging for the day, next day, make sure you take it out and, and do the proper charging. Put that in there. What you want to do when you do store them, if you're not going to use them the next day or not sure if you're going to use them the next day, pull the battery packs out of them. That way, if there's any corrosion or any leakage of the batteries, you're not causing damage to the units. Put the cap back in place. Carefully put the unit back in in its proper place and it's ready for, for storage.